What's up, everybody? 80 Soundhead back again with another episode of NASCAR Heat 2 Career. And today, we are at Texas for a doubleheader, Xfinity Series and Cup Series. So, uh, hoping for a good day today once again. And, uh, yeah. So, we'll jump right in, skip qualifying and practice, and just get straight to the racing. And here we go. So, uh, Texas. Interesting track, especially since they reconfigured it. And I really don't know what to expect out of this race. I'm hoping for, obviously, a win, because we've came so close a handful of times this season already. I feel like we probably should have won by now. But uh, hopefully we can do that today. There's contact with Ty Majeski already. Already almost spun somebody out. Not even a half a lap into this race. So, uh, yeah. So the real... I mean, the easiest way to get around here, as I'm failing to do so right now, as I get into the back of, uh, that was Carl Long that I hit there, is just to ride the bottom, really. I mean, uh, if you can get to the bottom and kind of sneak underneath everybody, almost like a plate track. But, uh, that's, that'd be the best opportunity to do it here. As we get to the back bumper of Yaley, and just staying in that draft on the back stretch, especially, is pretty important. So, just good do that and manage our way through some of these uh, cars. We got our uh, fellow <laughs> driver of the number 28, which I know that's kind of ridiculous that there's two 28s, but I kind of like the way that this car is, and I drive it through the grass. Jeez. Oh, my God. All right. That was a little extra. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the reason I'm not going to change the number, I know somebody brought this up in the comments uh, of the last one. The reason I'm not going to change the number is... I just kind of like having a uniform car. Like, I, I drove this exact car in the truck series, or this exact paint scheme in the truck series at the same number. I plan on doing the same thing if we move up to the Cup Series. So, yeah. I'm just going to kind of keep it uniform, even if it means that I have an overlap with another car that's using the same number. I'm just going to let it let it fly and about let it slide there underneath Brennan Gone. Get into that corner. But we're already at the last lap of the first stage here. Brandon Jones on our outside and just didn't even turn in that corner hardly so looks like we're going to come out of this first stage in about 18th unless we can get to the inside of these guys right here and take it to the grass and 18th we will come home so not a bad first stage got about halfway through the field can't complain about that and now it's just a matter of time uh, ticking down the laps and hoping to have uh a solid chance of getting up to the front here, which we do, but not if I get this high on the track and I've lost a little bit of ground, but the draft will help us catch back up. I'll try and shove it to the outside of Wallace Jr., of old Bubba, who's going to be driving that beautiful Chevrolet next year. That uh, Man, that Camaro body just looks so good. I have yet to see a bad paint scheme on it, so that's promising. And... uh Basically guarantee it at this point that in 2019 the Mustang will go to the Cup Series. I, I essentially guarantee it. So uh, mark it down in your calendars after 2018. Uh, the, probably be the last year of the Fusion body. So get your die casts and whatnot. Because uh, you probably won't see the Fusion in NASCAR too much longer uh, after this season. So there you go. You heard it here first. And uh, that's how you can tell basically if, if Ford cares about NASCAR at all. If they care, they 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 will bring the Mustang body up to Cup. If they if they don't care, they're just gonna roll with the Fusion body. Cause unless they redesign the Fusion to be aerodynamically competitive with uh, Toyota and obviously the new Chevrolet body, I have a feeling is gonna kind of catch them back up. It's if Ford doesn't do anything about it, then that basically shows how much longer Ford will probably be in NASCAR. They just don't care. So yeah. <laughs> Should be interesting. Be nice if Dodge made a comeback at some point, too, because I think that Charger just looks so good. And uh, I wouldn't mind having the Challenger back either, maybe in the Xfinity series, but that's for another time, I guess. So we are three wide with Allgaier and Byron, and three wide is not good. Still three wide. This is not a desirable situation. Of course, somebody gets underneath Allgaier, and now I'm stuck up here, and I make a little bit of contact with Allgaier, but this is going to be sketchy going into the tri oval here, and oh, Jesus Christ, he just slams right into me, and he wrecked himself, 
and he's going to spin up back into traffic, and that's probably going to be a fairly big crash. But we came home ninth, so not bad. Alrighty. So, stage two complete, on to stage three, and there are 14 laps left, which means that we, uh, we could do this without having to pit again and possibly uh, get ourselves a little fuel strategy win. So if we can make that with no more cautions, we might be sitting uh, in a pretty good spot. And here come all the cars to pit road. There they go. So now we just got to stay out and hope that we don't have a caution come out. Last couple of times we tried to do the strategy, we've been unlucky and the caution comes out. So, Alrighty, looks like we're going to come home to a win there. Hold off Cole Custer. And uh, there you go. First one of the season at Texas. About time. Probably should have had a couple of wins by now, but threw some away. So everybody was a lap down. Gotta love that. So there you go. We get $209,000. Jeez. Plus our $35,000 paycheck. I wouldn't mind that. So there you go. Fourth overall in the standings now. Locked in to the playoffs with a win. So, uh, yeah. Good to finally get that out of the way. So uh, we'll head back in. And next we got a cup race. So let's go see what that's all about. So Texas is in the books. And we got a message. Ryan Blaney's happy for us. Kyle Larson says we have 100,000 fans. We do. 100,000. 100, 105,000. Can't read. And Harrison Rhodes, even though he told me to clean it up, is uh, happy for me. So good to know. So, oh, no. We're going to be driving a crap car. All right. Well, let's give it a shot. Everything is bigger in Texas. And that statement couldn't be more true for today's running of the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500 at Texas Motor Speedway on TRN. This 1.5-mile D-shaped oval recently underwent a Texas-sized overhaul. Speedway Motorsports added a new layer of asphalt over the existing pavement, and they reduced the banking in turns one and two by four degrees. Let's see if these drivers have mastered the new configuration. It's time to go racing. All right, so... Top 25 is the requirement. I don't know. With a car like this, the 51, uh, yeah. Pretty sure this is a start and park car. Or a car that usually finishes in the last position on Sunday. So, we shall see. We're filling in for Cody Ware, which, I mean, I basically have zero respect for this guy. So, I'd be more than happy to take his ride over if it didn't suck so bad. But, uh, it is what it is. And, I'm sure, I'm, that, that's kind of old news by now. But, uh, everybody pretty much knows why Cody Ware is kind of a, kind of a scumbag. But won't go into it. Uh, I'm sure you can Google it. You'll find it. But, uh, yeah, he said some pretty stupid stuff and basically just made himself look like a jackass. But it is what it is. We'll move on here. We're watching this race, having a... I say watching it. I'm driving the dang thing. And the caution's out. All right. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah. I'm just going to pit. Like like you saw, I, I'm at the back now. And I'm just going to pit every time there's a caution. Because, I mean... I, I say I'll pit every time there's a caution if I'm, like, below 30th position. Because at that point, it's almost like there's no point. So, just pass the cars back. I only have to get to 25th. So, I have zero stake in this race other than until the last stage. So, I'm just going to get there. And then I'll... I really go for it. But until then, I'm just kind of let it ride out as I'm getting shoved wide by the 83. The Joy Boys rejoice. And he's going to run into me. And looks like he might even spin himself. And nope, he's going to run into me again. All right, now he spun himself out. Nice going there. But oh, man, he killed that inside wall, too. Rip indeed. So just going to pit. I mean, who cares? We were two, two places up. And uh, LaJoy just killed that inside wall. So he, he didn't even pit. He's going to ride it out like a champ. But it is what it is. So, back underway. Stage one still underway. Man, these these cup races are long. And uh, when once we sign, if we get into season three and we get in full time cup series before like the end of this game's lifespan, uh, and once we get to the cup series full time, I think I might shorten the length of the races just because I don't want them to be too drawn out to a point where it just like takes forever and it's almost like grindy. I'll say. Um, because having like a super long race, like obviously in real life is fine, but when you're sitting here watching the video, kind of, I, I, I don't like watching long races uh, on like the game, like through the game, or doing the long races even. 
So I like to try and keep these uh, career mode videos under 15 minutes when possible. Like, uh, obviously, the championship rounds are always pretty much going to be longer than that because you have to squeeze three races into one video. Uh, and that's for, like, the playoff rounds like I did last year with the Truck Series or last season with the Truck Series. So once we get to the Cup Series, I might shorten the length of the races just to keep the video lengths down below 15 minutes. And uh, I think that'll be decent at least. But we are coming home on Stage 1. 31st, like I said, didn't really even try. We don't have any stake in this until uh, until the final stage. So that's when I'll really start to try. So a pit, take four tires, and we're back underway already with Elliot Sadler in front of us. And uh, I don't even know who's driving that 72. Is that, uh, is that Cole Witt? I think it's still Cole Witt. I don't know. You know, I have a, a totally ridiculous grudge against Cole Witt and really it shouldn't even be against Cole Witt because it really should be against whoever Cole Witt's crew chief was at the time but I'm still salty about the 2016 Xfinity uh, championship race at Homestead the last restart I feel like Cole Witt totally screwed Eric Jones out of a championship because he didn't pit and then he just spun the tires and held up the entire outside line as I just wrecked two guys are you joking so here I am chastising one guy and then I wreck somebody so that's where the problem is with me. All right. Back. How many cautions are we going to have in this race? It's been a bunch already. So back to 40th again. Try it again. Just got to get to these stages because really, I, I've said it like five times. I'm not saying it again. You you know what we're going for here. But yeah, Cole Witt, uh, I feel like he screwed Eric Jones. And really, it was whoever's Eric Jones or whoever Cole Witt's crew chief was just made a bonehead move and left his car out on like a thousand lap old tires and and then the restart happened he didn't even go and then the whole outside lane just and then daniel suarez basically just freaking walked it home for the championship so are you joking are you serious why do i suck so bad man and i was doing so good at that too i was gonna say i'm amazed i haven't done that yet and there it is so I need to quit blowing it, evidently, because I was just, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, man, you know, I haven't, I haven't hit the apron at all today. I'm doing good. And then I went and I did it. So I need to get my head in the game. But again, another caution. What was that about? Like, I, well, obviously I know what that one was about, but what are all these cautions for? Like, I know I'm wrecking half of these dudes, but some of the ones I just don't even have explanations for. So it is what it is. Uh, I just got left behind by the field. For some reason, Truex, Blaney, and Larson are all back here with me. So they must have pitted or something. I don't know what they're going to do. But they're going to ruin their stage two. They must be making a strategy run. So we get underneath Truex. Oh, boy. We are uh, battling with the champ right now for uh, dead last. Seems legit. Got loose into that corner with a little bit of contact from Truex even. We got Blaney right in front of us now. Just going to rub his bumper in three wide during the middle with Blaney and uh, LaJoy, a.k.a. the Le Goat. La Goat, as Reddit says. And uh, oh, the champ's fighting back on our inside, but we're going to make a run for it. Three wide, Ty Dillon just runs into us for no reason, and the caution's out. I don't know if that was the actual end of the stage or if that was just like a caution coming out, but uh, who knows. So uh, we uh, we only took fuel on that one, and we actually made quite a large gain. But it really doesn't matter because if there's another caution, like we still we can't make it to the end. So if there's another caution, we're gonna have to take more fuel. So it doesn't matter. But side by side with my Xfinity Series teammate there, Red Keselowski, and he's gonna get by me, and so is Dale Jr. By the looks of things. And man, Dale Jr. Rough final season. Now that it's over, looking back on it, I was like, man, really wish he would have got at least one win. Even if it was a freaking, like, rain thing, I would have been happy with that as a bunch of guys just hit the outside wall and a stack up on the outside. And Jesus Christ, Brad Kozlowski just slams it out to the outside line. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what that was all about. But, uh, yeah, crazy. So we're up to 7th in the 51. Again, the uh, epitome of realism. Because <laughs> uh, if this was a real game, we'd be in. The, if this was realistic, we'd be in the garage right now. So, you know, there's that. And it's another stack up, and Kenzie's gonna go behind us, and the caution is out. Man, this is a caution fest. And uh, we didn't pit yet because we still can't make it to the end. So, 
Um, my money's on there possibly being another caution, so I'm just going to stay out and get as many spots as I can until it's time to pit. So, yeah. Because I just want to make it to 25th. Get my money. Like I said, we ain't going to win this race. So who cares? Three wide on the bottom there. And we're going to pass these guys. <laughs> so uh, I need to get a look at the fuel situation here when we come to the... Tells us how many laps we have left. So 13 laps to go. And it doesn't matter because the caution's out. All right. So we're going to take fuel and four tires will pit. And uh, we'll lose 25 spots, but it's okay because we're 29th. That means we only have to pass four cars to get up and uh, get where we need to be. So, not bad. But underway here, once again, with 10 laps to go. And Danica's back here. Again, it looks like her 2018 plans are kind of falling apart. Uh, her IndyCar ride has vanished. Nobody knows where it went. It's just gone. Uh, I guess she had a breakdown with... I, I guess it was Chip Ganassi or somebody who was going to field the car, but... Yeah, I guess it fell through. I don't know what she's going to do now. If she's not even going to run the Indy 500 or if she's going to run some poop car and I'm in the grass again. And I'm in the grass again. And I'm in Elliot Sadler. And I'm in the wall. Bam! There it is. And, and the big one is broken out at Texas. And we're back in last again. So back in last, um, not good. We'll have to see uh, how many laps are left. Uh, there's going to be about six once we get to the line. So not a great scenario having to pass 15 cars in six laps. While it is possible, it's not the ideal situation. And DiBenedetto is going to block me and he's going to slam the brakes while he does it. So, yeah. I, 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 we got to get our game face on and focus for this one because I've been blowing it, and I don't enjoy blowing it. I don't think most people enjoy blowing it. All right, this is... Innuendos need to stop. I, I am blowing I'm going to get freaking demonetized now. Watch. But anyway, Colwitt with his dumb crew chief, and Jay McMurray's up in the wall. He's dead. And Jeffrey Earnhardt's in front of us now. And we got a LaJoy boy is back on our outside. And he's apparently faster than he we are because he just freaking got a speed boost from nowhere. Jeffrey Earnhardt, just, I just gave him a shot. And that somehow propelled him in front of us enough to clear us. I wish physics worked like that for me in this game. Where if somebody hit me, it just gave me more momentum instead of just about kill me. But, ah, uh, dude, it is what it is. Again, the physics... Not exactly the epitome of realism, but for an arcadey game, it's fun. And that's what I'm looking for. So, you know, I, it, I've been thinking about this since we're, I, you know, I want to, like, talk about this stuff, but I also need to focus on getting to 25th because the laps are winding down here. Uh, but I was thinking, like, I, I would do a review of NASCAR Heat 2 now that I've played it a bunch and I've, like, played a bunch of different aspects. One, I would say this is a really good game as freaking Elliot Taylor just about killed me. And, I don't know, really good. I, I think it's a strong game. It's definitely a big step up from NASCAR Heat 2. It's still got a lot of work to, you know, it, it needs better, it needs a better engine. I'm just going to flat out say it. They need to ditch Unity uh, sooner rather than later. I'm thinking they can maybe squeeze one more game out of the Unity engine and then they got to make a change. Because the graphics are just going to piss people off. And, I mean, it doesn't look like... I mean, it's not a bad-looking game. As I almost just spun myself on the apron again. It's not a bad-looking game. But it could look so much better. I mean, even the Eutechnics games... Like, if you polished that a little bit... I, it, it, you wouldn't be sitting... You'd be you'd be in a pretty good spot, graphics-wise. Uh, and then, as for the physics, obviously, you can tweak on those as you go. The more games they make, the better it'll get. So, I'm not too concerned about that. But all around, I think it's a solid game. I don't like that they charge, a you know, for a bunch of DLC packs, paint schemes... I wish they just update those for free, but that's my wallet talking, so you know how that goes. But looks like we're going to get up into 25th here. We're in 24th right now. Patch right in front of us, and we're going to dive to her inside. But really, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about making a dedicated video just talking about what I think about NASCAR Heat 2 now that it's fairly long into its life cycle. And 
I, I might do it, I might not, I don't know. Uh, I like the game. I know a lot of people don't. I know some people do. I really like the game. And, uh, yeah. That's my honest, unbiased opinion. I really do like this game. So we come home 23rd. That's what we came out to do. Get me the hell out of Texas. I'm done racing this place. That's enough racing for me for a lifetime here in Texas. So come home 23rd. We'll hit our objective. That's all that really matters to me. Come on. Let's, let's, let's get this show on the road. Let's go. All right. So that's $150,000 for getting the top 25. And next, we'll be headed to an Xfinity race at Bristol. So you know we'll have a good shot at possibly winning that race. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see all of you on the next one.